The Lord be with you. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. It's a good thing that God creates mothers. And so we celebrate you and are thankful for you and the mothers in our lives this day. Let's worship together. He is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Please stand as you are able for our call to worship. Voices raised in song. We praise you. Filled with rich joy. We sing your glory. Fathers hugging a child. We share your love. Mothers tending a wound. We demonstrate your care. Friends offering prayer. We remember you. Voices lifting a joyous refrain. God, we praise you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hands we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. 
In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is 759, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, reserve the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May be seated for reading of Scripture.
Good morning and happy Mother's Day. Our first lesson is from Acts, the 17th chapter. <clears throat> Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the time of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the time of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Yes. Psalm 66. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I called out to God with my mouth and praised the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. Our second letter is from the first letter of Peter, chapter, th chapter 3. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good, for your good conduct in Christ, may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be God's will than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, all righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, 
but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I'll ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me and those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm glad to see you all. The Lord be with you. You know, that's what our Gospel reading is about. The Lord being with us. I go away, but I will come back and I'll be with you. I send you an advocate, the Spirit of God present. Where has God been present in your life this week? Where have you seen the movement in the Spirit of God? Stories are meant to be told. Yes! In the ocean, in the birds. In the beach, guess where Debbie just came from? The sun sets, the sun rises. We see God in the nature all around us, the beauty. Um, I shared this last week that my, uh, my nephew, my niece's husband, is in hospice care at Johns Hopkins. And he had a special request. His last wish to go out one more time and to be able to see the sky to be outdoors. And so the life support team took him up to, this, to the rooftop where the helicopter comes and took him on top so that they could see the whole skyline of Baltimore and see the sunsets. It was a wonderful gift they did. Um, and I thought it was wonderful. I, I just got to be with my brother and, uh, and with Angela and Alexander on Thursday evening this week. Um, and I've been thinking about the gift of presence, the gift of presence of, of God in our lives and the gift of presence. What a gift for me to be with them. They told me that when they took them up there, I didn't think about it, but if you have a platform where um, helicopters land, you don't have big walls surrounding it. You just have a drop-off. 
So they said it was a little frightening going out there. There was this narrow walkway that they pushed this hospital bed out and Angela in her wheelchair followed. She has a motorized wheelchair. She has cerebral palsy. And she was out there on this glorious evening with the sunset and they played uh, lively music. And to revisit a sermon or a reading, gospel reading that we had recently, in my father's house are many rooms and I go to prepare a place for you. And I've been thinking about how we always interpret that as um, heaven. But if you think about where is heaven? It's where God is. And where is God? God is all around us. And I've been thinking more in these past couple weeks about how God is creating rooms for us here and now. Um, I was Thursday with the Synod, the Synod uh, team for candidacy. And I was there praying and accompanying as chaplain people who were in the process of seeking ordination and thinking about God creating rooms, places for them. It was amazing to enter the hospital room and you know, there had been so much, so many people in there before, and he had been on um, the uh, intensive care unit of Johns Hopkins and had heart teams and lung teams and all kinds of teams and lots of people, and lots of doctors, lots of care. So they moved him more to a quieter place. And when I went in, it was the most intimate setting with my brother, his wife, Angela, and her husband. And I was moved by the strength and the calmness of my niece in that place. And the room was filled with bright colors and banners, balloons, and streamers that the nurses had done for him. And could see the presence of people and their gifts and the presence of God there. I had the opportunity to marry them, to officiate at their wedding. And so I offered you know, to go and to give a prayer of commendation. That didn't go the way I imagined. But what was important was the presence. And I received so much by getting to be in their presence. On the way home, it was late at night. I got here back 1130 at night. And driving along, there was lights and glares and construction. And there were places where we were rerouted off the road. And um, there was one place where I was driving along in construction and my lane ended on the freeway and I didn't notice it but apparently all the other cars did because they were all moved over and I looked to see if I could change lanes and I, I couldn't tell how far back it was it was a truck it didn't seem like it had enough room for me to move over just these glaring lights and I came to a complete stop and I looked in my mirror and all the way back to you know across the continent was a long line of of lights, of cars coming down fast. And I thought, I don't know how I'm going to get back in the lane I'm supposed to safely. And I could just imagine trying to pull over and not be able to see, and I had lights glaring, and I've got these bubbles in my eyes, floaters, and, and that reflects the light. And you know what happened? About a couple cars behind this truck that passed, the car slowed down to a complete stop and stopped the whole line of traffic. And beep, beep, gave me a couple of very friendly beeps saying, you can come in now. And this one smaller vehicle took the power and the space to create a space for me. And I thought, oh, my, this is maybe a different kind of room that my father in heaven and that Jesus is creating these spaces for us and thinking about the spaces that we create. And this morning, thinking about the spaces that our mothers create for us. Thinking about our first womb, our first home. <laughs> I gave it away. <laughs> our first home inside the womb, and to be carried by our mothers for nine months living inside of there. You know, we had Josefina, who um, was our cook. She took care of Kathy for the pregnancy of our first daughter. And Josefina and Kathy were together a lot and talking. And it was interesting after Clara's birth that she was comforted by Josefina's presence. I think she recognized the voice from through the womb. And if I could remember back, I'll bet the things that comforted me were the sound of my mother's heartbeat and the sound of her voice 
and, and those things of, of comforting. And I was thinking about, you know, after birth, that mothers reflect who God is in many ways. Our prayer, Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. And as a little baby, my mother is the one who held together the heavens and the earth and could explain things and, and care for things and protect things. It's good to tell stories. They're meant to be told and they're meant to be told again. Um, tell the stories about your mothers and your experiences today in celebration. My mother was born in Nebraska. She was the fifth of six children, the five girls and finally one little boy. And her father died 1931. Guess when that was, the beginning of the Depression. And he died leaving my young grandmother with six kids to raise through the Depression. People told her that she needed to find homes for the kids, adopt them out, farm them out. And she refused to do that. She raised the kids, and I'm not sure how she did that, but be, she became a Methodist pastor. My grandfather was a Methodist pastor, and he died of some kind of a blood or heart disease when he was young. My grandmother became a, um, a pastor, and she passed in the Methodist church back before there were very many women pastors. And she cared for a lot of people, and during the wars and things like that, she did that. So my mother grew up in this home, and she thought that she was going to be a single missionary somewhere in the world, and that that was her gift in love to God, was sacrificing family and everything she knew to go to a strange land. She met my dad, and that changed her plans. But as a young mother, I was born in language school in Costa Rica, and then they moved to Ecuador. And at two months of age, when I was two months old, they moved to the jungle. They arrived there in the middle of the night after driving along these mountain roads and cliffs, curvy roads. And, and to get there to where we lived, you would drive through a tunnel in, this, in the side of this jungle road or through the mountains. You drive through um, places where the torrents of water in the rainforest that are coming down over the road. You just drive through the little rivers and the roads in your Land Rover Jeep. And then we finally arrived at our house, and it was dark. And my brother didn't want to sleep in the room because he was sure there were bears in there. So my mother arrived with four little kids, and then she had one more. And she took care of these kids, and she was the doctor's wife. She also began a school because she didn't want to send the kids away to boarding school like all the other kids had done. So she started a, a school in our home, and she found out after the first week there, all these people, we, we invited to different people's homes, and the same people showed up at all the meals, at all the missionaries' house. And at the end of the week, they said, okay, from now on, you have the boarders and the guest house, and your responsibility will be to feed all these people who've been coming each week. A new mother of four, new to this town, this jungle town, no lights at night, no electricity at night. She had taken for Christmas a uh, special canned ham because they said that was something you could do in the jungle. And she served that the very first day to all these people and thought, what am I going to do tomorrow? And she was a presence in our life that helped us just discover and receive life in the jungle. My dad had patients who came and they would bring gifts to him, uh, some who didn't have money. Would, you know, they barter and trade goods. And so we ended up with all kinds of pets, jungle birds, monkeys, uh, what we called a, a honey bear, which is not a bear, but it's kind of like a monkey. Um, we had possums and we had a, a boa constrictor. It didn't eat on its own, so we had to stuff hamburger down its throat and, and it choked to death. And then we got a baby alligator. It was really cute. You, you would rub its tummy and it would squeak. And it didn't eat either, so we choked it to death too. <laughs> but we had all kinds of these pets and creatures, um, beautiful creatures. We had, we had, we did have bugs. We had, you know when you have beetles flying around and they make these real loud noises? We had rhinoceros beetles that were about this long with their 
with their pinchers in the front. Half of the body was pinchers. And they have a foot-long wingspan. So if you can imagine the buzz and what that looks like when that beetle is flying around the room. We had two of those. I fell into the bathtub where it was, and it got one tangled in my hair and one tangled in my socks. But growing up, it was a paradise. And my mother took in all of these creatures. We also had a donkey. And, and whenever it went in heat, it would get stuck under the... the our house is on stilts. It would get stuck in the neither and bang around in the night with the male donkeys that were trying to chase after it. But this, for a child, was a paradise. I'm not sure if it was the paradise for my mom. But she took us all in and did that. She, we would call my dad for supper, and he wouldn't come home for several hours because he was at the hospital. He'd be in the delivery room, and he'd hold the baby up to the, to the window so that she could see, okay, I'll, I'll heat the food up because our house was next to the hospital, and she would see the little baby in the window, and so she would heat up his food, and he'd come like three hours after we called. And then at night, he would go back. He was, you know, for a while, the only doctor, and he would do the emergency rooms and the inpatient and the outpatient, and then he'd have emergencies at all hours of the night. I remember hearing the nurses knocking on the door, the lights would be out, and calling Dr. Swanson, Dr. Swanson, there's an emergency. And then I'd hear the light plant go on, and the lights would come on at the hospital across the street. And then hours later, my dad would finally come home, and my mom would say, I'm so glad you're home. He says, I'm not done. I just am here to take your blood. She's a universal donor. So she'd put out her arm, he'd take her blood, and he'd go back across the street to finish the surgeries. But my mom gave her life. She gave her blood. She gave her work. She walked around the hospital and prayed for him. And I think about someone who, for me, held together the heavens and the earth, and my mom was that. When she passed away, um, I flew down to Ecuador for the funeral, and I got to preside for the last part of the funeral. Her coffin had a, a cover on it with just a window where her face was, and I really wanted to touch her hands because those were the hands that held me. I remember sitting as a boy in church and, and moving my hands over her fingers and looking at her veins. And these were the hands that held me when I was a baby. And so I, when the staff wasn't looking, I lifted up the cover of the casket and I held her hands and got to hold her hands there in her casket. I got to preside for the last part of her funeral. And in that part, um, you know, we weren't in a hurry to say goodbye to her. The service was two hours, and it wasn't done yet. And someone came in the door and came walking down the aisle, and I could see there was bad news in his face. And I was there presiding, and he came up and whispered in my ear, if you're not at the cemetery in 15 minutes, they're going to close, and you can't bury your mom. So my mom is the only one I know who almost missed her own funeral. And, you know, I always felt a lot of shame about that. And in our memories with our children or our parents, sometimes we feel shame and embarrassment. I felt shame because I wanted a dignified burial for my mom. Instead, I told everyone, we're going to skip the rest of the service, and everyone will pray and then just run. And we lost all decorum, and people were grabbing the casket and running out the door, and whoever was close to the casket, and people were grabbing flowers and grabbing things and running. And my cousin said, that was perfect. Reframing the shame that I felt and the embarrassment. We loved her and didn't want to say goodbye too quickly. Some of the experiences of my mom, her presence in my life. Jesus says he will send the comforter, an advocate. And I think that our mothers, when we have experiences, you know, when I think back about her, she said a lot of amazing things, but I don't remember a lot of what she said compared to just remembering her presence. And the presence of God is a powerful presence. So then we had a daughter who was married, and I wanted to finish by reading about her wedding. And thinking about the presence of God in our lives and the gift of God in the people around us. Our daughter was buried, married, was married in our backyard in 
2015. On an incredibly beautiful fall day in mid-October, just over three weeks as I write this, my wife and I walked our oldest daughter, Clara, down the mulch aisle of our outdoor wedding, sunlight flooding through the woods and creek behind our house to the group of people eagerly receiving her, surrounding her, loving her on one of the most amazing days of her life. And at the front of the crowd, Jason, strong, gentle, beautiful, compassionate, face radiant, the one who vows to love her and care for her as her husband. Where do I begin with what I want to say as host of 150 people present, as father of the bride, and as the pastor proclaiming the presence and blessing of their creating and redeeming God? Where do I begin telling you about it? Present in the crowd were people who came from all over the world, the grandparents who gave them life itself and who've never stopped pouring out their love on them, their siblings who have lived the adventures with them, my sister who arrived to Clara's wedding with 600 roses that one day were bursting from the ground in Ecuador and the next were filling our backyard throughout the ceremony. My sister-in-law who traveled alone to Ecuador 26 years earlier to receive Clara at her birth. My cousin who hosted Clara's baby shower in their Quito home. A great uncle and aunt who were caught in Hurricane Mitch while sailing to visit us when we lived in St. Croix and Clara was in second grade. Friends from high school in New York who gave Clara a college home when we moved to India. College friends who flew in from all over the country. A Russian friend who hosted her wedding shower. Colleagues from work, artist friends who sang to them and recited poetry written for them. The wedding ceremony flowed into an exquisite banquet beneath the stars under the canopy of a 40 foot by 60 foot tent built by Clara's brother, Thomas. And the tent was of clear plastic, so you could see the starlights and you could see the fire of the bonfire. Affection called out through poetic toast. Live outdoor music moved through our bodies from stage rising in the middle of the lawn. People loved and danced the night away, some wrapped in blankets, others mesmerized around the campfire. Lost in a myriad of thoughts, I relived a journey that began decades ago. We had the front seats on a seven-hour bumpy bus ride through spectacularly beautiful Nepal where my wife's parents lived. Clara was five months old. The woman behind us, who only spoke Nepalese, asked to hold our baby. New to the country, I felt protective and uncertain, but my wife, Clara's mother, was home. Without hesitation, Kathy handed our precious little baby to this stranger. After a long time, I couldn't bear it any longer and turned around to receive back my baby only to find that she was gone. I quickly spotted her white face among the darker faces and brilliant clothing several rows back. My wife assured me it was okay. Next time I checked, she had moved farther back in the bus, surrounded and held by new faces. We journeyed over more bumps, winding road and beautiful scenery. Claire was now in the very back of the bus. As the hours progressed, she passed from one person to the next, held, surrounded, loved, and blessed in turn. She made her way up the other side, very content with all her needs met. Who knows what they fed her. Now, gazing into the fire of her wedding night, I knew that journey was still happening. At her wedding were so many people who were blessing her, loving her, surrounding her throughout her life journey, holding her even when she was beyond my reach. And as I think back to parenting our children, I think about the things that I regret, and sometimes it was a desire to be there for them when I wasn't. Clara drove herself off to college across the country right after she learned, got her driver's license. And we were in India, and the parent wants to take their child to college, but I didn't get to do that. She went off to India for a year when she was 15, and I didn't get to be with her. But there at the wedding was a reminder that when she was out of my reach, there were people with her who were the presence of God, the spirit, the comforter, working for her. And in the beautiful journeys of our lives, God is holding us, loving us, introducing us to an amazing world of night sounds, starlit roses, a community of faith, food and dancing into the night at a wedding feast between God and you, God's beloved. Do you have any idea how much God loves you? 
and what a beautiful world God opens to you for your sheer delight. May the infinite love and the peace of God hold you. Daniel Swanson, father of the bride that night and pastor of People of Hope. You know, one of the comforting things for me in the gospel passage of Jesus saying that he will send us a comforter is for all those times in my family, with my brother, with my parents, with my children, that I wish I'd said something different or where they were out of my reach or where relationships did not allow us to communicate. I wish I could just drop in on Angela and Al every day at the hospital. But the, the comfort is not only that the comfort is with us, but the comforter is with them. And when our children, when our parents, when our siblings are out of our reach, for whatever reason, God has people on that bus who are holding them and passing them from one to another. And he says, I will never leave you orphaned. May God's peace be with you.
Let's proclaim our faith in God through the words of the Nicene Creed. God who's present, God who is mother, father, who gives us life. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through, through him, him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So Debbie is sharing that Robert Twin has uh, returned back home to his Cumberland home, but he is having a lot of pain. We want to keep him in prayer. Thank you, Debbie. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord, our God, you are the one who holds heaven and earth together for us. Sometimes when things seem to be tearing apart, when the wounds are deep, when the questions rise up with uncertainty, when things are beyond our control or our repair, we thank you that you hold together the heavens and the earth. We thank you that you are our mother who gives us birth, who breathes life into us, who nurtures us, sustains us, and cares for us, watching out for us, and who knows us so closely. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, Lord, we thank you this day for your faithfulness. We thank you, oh, Lord, it is well with us, our souls, no matter what we go through, because you are caring for us, and you are caring for those we love, those who are out of our reach, as well as those within our reach. You know and you love each of them, for they are carried within your womb intimately. And so we commend them to you this day. We commend their families to you this day. We bring to the font for cleansing memories of pain, of shame, of things where we didn't live up to what we wanted to do, where our words fell short, or our words caused harm. Cleanse us and wash us from these things as a mother washes her little baby. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, come and care for those of our loved ones who are all over the earth, and your children all over the earth, those who find themselves in times of war, times of famine, times of flood, times of loss, times of joy, times of new birth, times of discovery, times of new abilities. We commend O oh Lord, our loved ones, your loved ones, to your care, for that is the very best place for them. This day we bring before you Jim Martin and Lydia. Surround them with your mercy, your strength, your comfort that only you can give. For health, O oh Lord, for the light of resurrection to shine. For John Hafer, for Pat Owen, Bert Leach, 
Connie Otto, Mary Sue and Bill, Rosie and Becky, Sherry and Terry, Marion, Jack Zeeland, Kathy Powell, Al and Matt, Mitzi and Jerry, Faye and Walt, Lisa and Dave, Vernon and Roxy, Linda and her mother, Mary Lou Rolls, Clem and Jane, Laura, Anna, Sharon, Carol, Leanne and Jason, April. We bring Robert before you and ask, O oh Lord, for your strength to be with them. We seek release from pain. We place them in your care. For Marlene, for Christian, for Ernest and Stephen. O oh Lord, we come before you with Cannon and Glenn Jackson. For the family of Arthur. For Shirley Mulligan, O oh Lord, Pam's stepmother. And sometimes things don't go as we want with health. We commend her to your care and ask that your mercy would surround. And we thank you, O oh Lord, that your ways are higher than our ways. For Amy Twig, home from the hospital, we thank you for that, O oh Lord, and for the answers to prayer for her. And we ask for continuing care for the miracles in her life of bringing her through brain surgery this week without side effects. And we commend her for the care that she has before her. For Cheryl, O oh Lord. For Val and her daughter. For those that we name now silently or aloud. These, your children, O oh Lord, in the rooms that you prepare for us. On the bus, there is a journey to your paradises and things you want to show us. Surround each one with your care and with people to care for them. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for our mothers, for mothers throughout the earth. We ask for your blessings for families this day. Lord, we love you. You are so good to us. And what you create is good. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Spread peace.
Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour, excuse me, in the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times, in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join there in ending him. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting. Your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ, broken for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and fell us to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. All are welcome. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Pray with me, please. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word in this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to share your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Today I've told you about seeing the presence of God and of the many angels that I've been encountering. Go and tell others about what you see of God's presence this week and of the angels that you see. For we are surrounded by God's angels. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. For him, go my children with my blessing. Thanks be to God.